Hey, I wanted to talk about Smart Animate in Figma. So this is a really powerful prototyping tool and typically it's used for kind of adding life to interfaces, making an interaction feel a little bit closer to how it would feel in an app. Um, this is not gonna be a practical application, just wanted to show kind of how it works. So first I'm gonna take this whole frame. This frame all I have is a frame within it and then a component inside here and then oh, I've got this background that I have hidden but I'm going to delete that for now so if I just duplicate this I have this new style that I want for the background I'm going to change the color and add a background blur on that so right now all that's changing is the background color so if I add a interaction so I'll just show dissolve. You can see, oh, I need to say, instead of on click while hovering. So now if I hover over this, this square, it'll fade to green. Now if I say smart animate, that's one of the animation options. What it's gonna do, it's gonna look at the first frame and the frame you're navigating to. So whichever uh, whichever frame you have an interaction linking it to, those are the two that'll matter for that animation. And it's going to look at all of the objects. So we have box and OK hand. And then in the first frame, we have box and OK hand. So because box is called the same thing on both frames, it's going to link those using Smart Animate. It goes off of layer names and layer hierarchy. So if you go and hover over it now, it looks exactly the same because the only thing changing is a color. So really it's, it's just fading. Um, if you want to see something change, you can change the size of this. Now you can see it actually scale down. You can change the size of the contents. And because these layer names, like I said, because OK hand is named the same thing, then that'll scale up. And I'll just show you real quick what happens if I were to change the layer name. Like sometimes you duplicate a layer and then move it to the new frame. And Figma is usually pretty good about, about layer names not conflicting like that. But um, it has happened to me before for sure that I, that I get like a, a number two on the end. So what happens then is Smart Animate isn't going to find that object. So while everything else on the frame will smart animate. Oops, I'm scaling and I want to just shrink that down. So you can watch, so the, the box scales down, the hand just fades. So if I change that layer name back again, you can see now they're both scaling properly. Now, so I set this component for the illustration up with a variant so I can turn the magic on here. We can get a little bit more action in that animation. And this is that background that I had on there. So I'm going to just drag this in. I'm going to center it, move it to the back, scale it up just a hair. Now if I just copy this and paste it into the initial frame, we'll move it to the back again. Um, so, well, you can see it's not going to do anything because it has the same size and everything. It has all the same properties. So there's no animation to be done there. But one kind of nice transition you can do is I can scale it way up and turn the opacity to zero. Now it'll, it'll kind of like fade in and you get like a little bit more motion. So you can kind of add a little bit more liveliness to, to the transition. You can see that Figma is starting to struggle a little bit. There's a lot going on that it's animating between. So I would say, you know, use sparingly if you have kind of complex artwork like this, this being vector with a lot of points and stuff, that's kind of what's slowing it down. Um, but for interfaces, which is typically what you're gonna be using this for, I would, I would imagine is um, an actual prototype for for like a UX project on an app. That's typically where you would see smooth transitions of objects that persist from one page to the other. Those it'll typically do really smoothly and it can be really effective in a prototype. 
Probably one of the coolest things about Smart Animate is you can actually use it without having to create kind of these duplicate objects on, on the initial and ending frame. So if I delete this background, if I still want some motion, but I don't want you know that big kind of scale down fade in, one thing I can do is I can select that interaction again. Instead of saying Smart Animate, maybe I want Slide In but I keep this checkbox marked Smart Animate Matching Layers. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna look again from start frame to end frame. It's gonna say, okay, we have box with okay hand here. We have box with okay, can, okay hand here. So Figma is gonna Smart Animate these layers, but Figma is not gonna find a match for Wacky Backy on the start frame. So because it can't find a matching layer for that, it's going to use Slide In. So now let's see what happens here. So now, without having to create duplicate layers that aren't necessary, you can still get some natural motion in and then smart animate the relevant layers that do appear on both frames. So it's, it's a way to kind of make the interaction a little bit more interesting and hopefully feel more natural without totally junking up your layers and having copies of everything on all the frames, which is, I would say, one of the biggest problems of trying to create nice prototypes is you just end up with so many duplicate layers on all these frames. So yeah, I mean, that's basically it. That's Smart Animate. Um, beyond that, I mean, obviously there's a lot you can tweak with the prototypes with just like the easing curves and the different, um, the different interaction triggers. But yeah, if you have any specific questions, I'd love to hear them and maybe I do another tutorial on it. Um, if I left something out or if you want to teach me, please leave it in the comments. But thanks for watching. If you learned something, like and subscribe.